what is going on guys it is your boy Cecil here bringing you guys a video here today bring you guys a Photoshop tutorial how to create your own cool HUD banner design it's something with the word HUD like HUD banner design tutorial here today so if you guys know already you guys really enjoyed the simplistic UI uh, banner design that I did before it was like a really cool sort of like just like quirky motion design effect kind of things and like a still image whatever that was a really cool design and whatnot but I wanted to give another inspiration on that and just kind of, sort of do something like this more of like like whole like the the tech HUD I kind of overlay display which kind of also goes into the whole UI aspect as well so hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today the speed is pretty cool I uh, you can see the entire process it was actually just completely like I had no other practice at all it was just, just the straight up the straight up like me trying my hardest to do something really cool and simplistic while also we're well, not simplistic really cool and like simple to do and uh, really just you know it's really fun honestly and honestly as well I do have two versions in here. This is the version I'm going to be teaching you guys in today's video, but the other version is just like a multicolored thing. But sort of like choosing your colors and stuff like that is sort of... I showed you guys in where the uh, tutorial where you can start switching your colors around. That way you can sort of like get a nice little color scheme if you don't want to just make it plain old red. But hopefully you guys do enjoy today's video here today. Um, yeah, it was like it was pretty cool. So of course, no likes on the video equals a secret download below. As always, guys, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Do not forget to comment down anything you guys want to see me do in the next tutorial or something like that. And also don't forget to, you know, put my notifications on a little bell icon thing. Yeah, you should click on that because you also will know when I go live and stuff like that. I've been going live a couple more, you know, a lot more times this week. I know I've like said I would do a lot more, but I'm like, at least I'm giving it a shot, you know. I do appreciate all the guys that are just coming out there, all the viewers, all the love, all those do do donations, subscriptions. You guys are freaking amazing, and I appreciate you, uh, appreciate you guys very much. Um, yeah, I'll tell you guys in a little bit. Cecil HQ out, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Peace. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this thing started. Now, I think I did say in the beginning that I do have two versions of this, so I'm gonna be doing this version here today with like not multiple colors, but trying to get like the whole entire concept down and help you guys understand. This is the other, obviously the second version you guys saw in the speed art little portion of the video. And uh, yeah, I think that came out pretty freaking cool. The only thing I wish I knew how to do was sort of fix something with the middle little sort of like UI icon thing, right? So I don't know what I'm gonna do about that, but who knows? Maybe you guys will figure it out yourselves. And anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing going. Just in case you guys wanted to know, my uh, current little, uh, I guess you would say the the dimensions here that I'm using is 3,000 by 1,000 pixels, which is basically the Twitter header dimension. That's all my always, just, I always hear you guys say it, what dimensions are you using? It's always gonna be 3,000 by 1,000 because it's my favorite dimension to work in because I think it just looks cool, right? Honestly, that's about it. Um, also, Control H, if I bring up my rulers, I am using rulers here today. So if you do not know how to use your rulers, you simply just gotta press Control R. You'll see that up here and over here to the left as well. They'll bring up some rulers up for you guys. So all you would have to do is just click on the left-hand side and then simply just drag it over and then you'll feel like a little snap when you hit like the middle and you just gotta let go so pretty much you just want to find out where the middle is on all your stuff so that way you know exactly where you're sort of like stopping and you know doing your thing at right so okay let's do the first thing in today's video and just for the sake of like knowing how to do it exactly the way I did it, I'm going to be using my like little banner as a template when I pen tool it out. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do that for you guys right now. So the first thing I went ahead and did was this first line right here. So basically what I did was I made a new layer. I'll make it a new layer below. Oh, I'll make it above everything. Yeah, I'll make it above everything. And we're going to use the P on the keyboard for the pen tool. And correct, we're just going to simply just do like these little, uh, the first little thing you're going to do. I'll just show you guys after I like sort of finish this really quickly. Right, the first little bit, I guess the line I'm going to be doing is going up and down quite a few times. Really, it's about what happens when you hit like the middle, right? So what I mean by that is very simple, like up, down kind of thing, right? Just sort of look at it as a, I don't know, just some sort of like, uh, like almost like an overlay in a way, if you've ever done overlays in your lifetime, but something like this, right? Then the whole part about this part is, is making it very like very up and down so you can see here the thickness in between these and this is a lot thicker obviously than this one here this is actually more thinner than this one this is gets even more thinner this gets even more thinner this gets really big and that part was just like a little bit of like a whole like a just a fun little diet like a dynamic thing right so this is gonna be pretty thick here let's just make this a thick and let's make this really thick for whatever reason like we're gonna make it like four c's thick right and then we're gonna go ahead and go down here and we'll make this pretty skinny right just like so make this pretty skinny I'm holding shift by the way to make a straight line and we'll just bring this over here kind of make something like that try to follow the same angle as before you kind of have to eyeball it for a little bit if you guys want to pen tool it out of course make this one really thick why the hell not and then we'll do something like that there make that pretty skinny make this a little bit bigger than the other one make it a little skinny again really nice and big again and then sort of medium size thinner and then finish it, off, finish it off with like another same exact size as this one. Why the heck not, right? So what you're going to end up having is 
this right here sort of like a little fun like i said like a very different dynamic sort of i guess little line right it's kind of like a line in a way and i'm gonna make sure i kind of have this like at least the right angle right i think we we kind of conquered that right i think okay that's pretty good so the call that i'm using for today's video i'll tell you guys the backdrop and all that stuff in a quick second as well so the primary red color that i'm gonna be using in today's video is hex code df3747 press ok press ok again and that gives me that nice little line there perfectly inside there looks good this right here might be a little awkward for me so i'm gonna go back really quickly and sort of fix this i feel like this needs to be a little bit thicker if it's gonna go into a thin line like that right I think something like that looks a little bit better. All right, cool. So also the background color that I am using for today's video is hex code 0E0F12. So if you guys want to use the same exact sort of bluish black background I have going on, that is what it is. So once I've had this thing going here, I immediately just made a duplicate of this first little uh, shape here. So as you can see here, I just simply hold alt, right? Hold alt, hold shift, bring it down here. And I'll try to find exactly where I had it before, something like around here, right? So what I had, ended up doing was pressing control T and I flipped it horizontal and vertical. That way I had a completely different sort of, you wouldn't be able to like completely see it if you were like, obviously look, I mean, if you look on this right here right now, right? You can see like, now you're sort of seeing like, okay, this was actually sort of uh, the same exact thing flipped over, but you see it's not the same exact sort of up and down ratio between these two here. That's why it looks pretty cool. Uh, unless I do, like I may, I probably have to just flip it like that, right? No, like this. Yeah, there we go. That looks probably the best, right? Since we have two different, Sort of starting angles when it goes up and down right so that's probably the best thing you can do for yourself that we have to redo it over and over again however if you want to choose to make another one of these little lines here go for it but the next thing i actually ended up doing was these sort of little like lines going through here and the reason why i just chose to do this because i just thought it looked pretty cool honestly and actually before i do that i'm going to do this little simple little thing here like these little air vents i call them air vents because i don't know what the heck else to call them so what i ended up doing was we're just going to call this shape one make a new layer right okay Take our pen tool and I'll try to follow this same as I think again. Let's go over here, over here. So by the way, just in case I didn't mention it before, I know I did though, hold shift to make your straight lines. So every time I'm clicking over, I'm holding shift to make my straight lines. We're gonna go down here, over there, boom. Go up there, up there, right? And then like this and like that, and then go through again. I'm gonna change it up just a little bit boom boom oh i went all the way didn't i super okay let's go back i didn't realize i went all the way there we go that's how it's supposed to be perfect so once you have this pretty much you're gonna find yourself choosing a color right so how i did this was uh, by the way choosing color i mean like stroke color and stuff like that so the way you want to set up your stroke is you want to use a brush now you press b on your keyboard to bring up this table you can right click on it you want to change your size to whatever the heck it is to two points and then change your hardness to 100. this will basically make it look like something like this right when you click and does something like that right so what's going to happen here is you're going to take that brush setting and then apply it to this stroke the way you do that is you press right click on the pen tooled uh, tool right you want to go to stroke path on a new layer i think i'm on a new layer right stroke path then you want to go to drop down use the brush and then press ok once you've done that you can delete the path and then you have this sort of little simple little line going through this here and it looks pretty freaking cool and it just makes it just look like more thing as we're having kind of looks like it's almost going in and out also between these actual lines here which looks pretty cool there we go and so really quickly before i continue i know i actually did these little vents as well so let me just do that really quickly now i think makes perfect sense the way i did this let's just call this line and we're going to call this vent and on this vent layer here this new layer we're going to basically go ahead and sort of make these little vents so the way i did it was i penciled out a very simple like slanted rectangle almost right so i'm like this now we try to make sure we make it as even as possible i think that is as even as possible i'm going to get for right now and we're going to go ahead right and we're going to right click we're gonna fill this in oops fill this in with the red color we have using before and we're gonna hold alt and shift and just drag it over as i'm holding on shift it's gonna basically stay in the same exact orientation as like every time i move it on so it's perfectly straight and stuff like that so i think is it one more or let's just put one more in there why the heck not there we go so what i ended up doing was to make it really look cool and kind of have like a little vent kind of thing to it i went ahead and changed my opacity to 10 on the last one 30 on the second one then I went to 45 and then I went to 60 and then I sort of left it like that. I made these little vents just by doing that. Very, very simple. It just adds a, like a kind of a lot, honestly, if you think about it. And what I ended up doing was 
I'll then control, excuse me, hold shift. So if I hold the first, uh, click on the first layer, there we go. Hold shift, click on the last layer. That way it selects everything in between. You hold G, control G to uh, con uh, sort of combine them into a one group. Press control J to then make it into another sort of duplicated group. And then you press control E to then merge it all together. The way I wanted to do this because I want to go to control T, flip it horizontal. Oops, no, vertical. No, what is it? Flip it. Let's flip it horizontal and then vertical. There we go. And what I ended up doing was control T, right clicking, pressing skew, and then just clicking this here and just moving it over. Okay, move it over with skew. Very simple. And I'll control T again, shrink it down just a little bit to match the same exact thing as this. And I made another vent right there. Very, very simple, honestly. All right, I'm also gonna move this over just a little bit, actually. Let's go ahead and move that just a little bit over. All right, cool. So the reason why I want to do that really quickly was to show you guys really some little grading kind of thing in between uh, these little vents, I'm going to call it, right? Is because this first one, I made this color here, this first little line, but I made a couple more lines. I made one more, actually, just one more, actually, not a couple more. I made one more line. So what I'm going to do really quickly is make sure I also group these things or call them what they are because I don't want to get lost in what they are. Make another new layer. And we're going to follow that line once again with the pen tool. Very simple, right? Now, I don't actually use, I don't have to use this little image here. I'm just, I just wanted to, to make it look as similar as it was possible from the other one, but I won't use it this time just so I can show you guys what I mean by like, I can just simply just literally kind of figure out what the heck I want to do here. And let's just say right there is how I want it. Let's like that, right? Cool. So what I ended up doing for this was using the same exact brush settings, the two, uh, two size, right? And then the 100 hardness, you very, very simply have to just on your new layer with the pen tool tool, right click, stroke path, drop down, use brush, and then delete the path. So they have the two separate colors here, or excuse me, two similar colors here. So what I ended up doing was double clicking on this layer 22, which is basically this line right here, going on color overlay, um, and then using the color picker. And we're going to choose like, like this color here, like one of these two ending colors here on this little vent here, that way we can have just a little more dynamic into it. And it looks pretty cool. And I think that is pretty accurate to what I had before. So we're going to call this line two, right? And all these one in line two, I'm going to put them together, actually. That way, I can group them together as well. And then just call it lines. Right? Cool. So, what I'm going to do with this is control J. And then simply, like I said before, alt shift. Or excuse me, just shift now because I already can duplicated it. And then just move it down here to something like this. Flip it horizontal or vertical. I'm going to go with vertical this time. And then do something like this. So, now you have these cool little twiggly, swiggly, whatever lines inside the thing. What the heck is the word twiggly? I don't even know. Anyway. We're gonna call this lines bottom bottom there we go all right cool and i'm gonna end up doing is sort of finishing out this whole entire thing right so basically the only thing i'm missing here is this, like little top section i wanted to fill more space with this actual design and also this little intersection here where it has like a very odd like blue shade in there it's very very simple and easy to do so what i ended up doing was making a new layer below everything basically uh using the rectangle marquee tool and we're gonna simply sort of like figure out Somewhere around here. I think right here is a pretty good spot. Obviously, I'm not going to get up here. I can't get down here. I'm going to say, like, where is, like, the most sort of, you know, rectangle-ish spot that I don't have to, like, go all the way. The entire, you know, the entire, like, little lines on the top to bottom here, right? So, I meant, like, just basically make a nice little rectangle in the inside. Right-click. We're going to fill this in with a color. We're going to select the background for a second. And then we're just going to move it up. Just move it up to around, like, I don't know, just a couple, like, a little inch, right? Press OK. Press OK again. And then you have this here, like a very obvious, you know, different size or different color. I don't know if this is the right color for me, though. I want kind of like a more bluish tint, like something like that almost, right? All right, so if you guys want to copy the same exact color, the hex code for this is 181B24. Press OK. Press OK again. All right. And then we're going to rash this layer, because why the heck not? We're going to use the eraser, a nice little soft brush eraser, zero hardness, and nice little size. And simply, this is here. Let's just uh, erase, just like so. Boom. 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 All right, there we go. I think that's pretty good. So once you have this, if you want to lower the opacity down, you could just a little bit maybe. I just wanted to be shown that there is, this is like a little inside thing going on here. So I'm going to put on 80% opacity. I think that's pretty fair. All right, cool. With this, let's just say now, let's just do this little other part right here, right? This little sort of like squiggly line thingies, whatever the heck they call them. Let's just call them circuits. I don't even know. We're going to just put this in here and call glow inside. And we're going to go ahead and then make a new layer. And we're going to follow these little lines here. So what I ended up doing was, 
I believe I just did it on this side here. We're just going to do something like this. I don't actually need this. I don't even need this at all. Let's just go ahead and move this line a little bit further down. So let's make something like this, right? Go down like very far. Then we'll make another line right here. Make it come down like a little, just like basically halfway. And make another line with the pen tool and make it come down. Oh, we'll make this one very far actually and like that. Right, something like that. So you have something like this. And then very simply as before, right click, stroke path, use the brush, press okay, delete, and there you guys go, right? And the way I did this little simple little part where it's kind of like bolded, all you honestly have to do is kind of like think about it and you're like, okay, hold on, triple lines. All I ended up doing was making a new layer, using the rectangle marquee tool box, and then simply going over one of them, alt backspace, because I have the color already in my uh, foreground color. And then you can put on either all of them or two of them, you can put it on the top one or the bottom one. <coughs> Excuse me. God, that was weird. All right. That looks pretty good right there. Okay. So I'm going to say, did I put it? I think I just duplicated it over on the other side as well. Like this. We're going to put this in one group and call it triple lines so I can move the boxes out as, as I wish. Right? I did do that. So what I ended up doing was take this entire box where it's grouped in together with these lines. Hold Alt Shift. Move it over. Control T. Flip it horizontal. And then we're just going to sort of put it like something like this, but I'm going to switch the box here. I'm going to put on the second one. There we go. That way it's a little bit different than this one right here. It still has a nice little dynamic that's obviously changed, right? We're going to call this double lines, uh, triple two, whatever. All right, cool. And then I'm going to put on the top as well, because I think I did do that before. Just simply taking it and duplicating it over. We'll make it a little longer than this one. So it looks a little bit different. If you want to, I ended up actually sort of like changing. Let's change this, change this as well. Let's just change this to like something like that. Or just put on all three, because why the heck not? There we go. A little bit different there. And then what I can do as well is we'll call this triple three. And then move it over on this side this time. And then flip it horizontal. And then we'll sort of just shrink it like this. There we go. So there's our little part where it's kind of like filling up space. Now it might look a little bit weird at the moment because I, I think it's pretty still accurate to what I had before, but that's basically what I did to fill my space. And if you want to do something like this, you certainly definitely can. I think the last thing I did to fill space was these little lines that just have like little dots on it. So what I ended up doing was making a new layer. Let's do this thing. Take our pen tool, go in something like this and like that, right? Kind of like something like this, very simple. And then to fill space here, I just put something like right there and went down there. Very, very simple, honestly, right? Take my stroke path, brush, delete. We'll call this extra. Make a new layer. And on this new layer, we had a nice little ellipses circle. Put them at the end of, or sort of like at the sort of uh, turning points of each of these little things. Oops, I wanna make sure I wanna have this color, this nice red. Press okay, press okay again. And I was gonna have them on each little point here. I'll put it on that little section where it's kinda comes down at the end of each of the little lines here. And then I'll have this one, I just made me like that end and then maybe this end and not put it in the middle, just so I can have it a little, be a little bit different, right? And with that, that sort of completes this whole entire like left-hand side half. And all you really have to do now is sort of like, if you want to put things more into other places, what I ended up kind of wanting to do was that I actually did not do, I'll just show you guys really quickly, just in case you want to take advantage of this, is I took a new layer. I wanted to try to make, make it like seem like it was, oops, I gotta use the rectangle one. Like they had some little bit more lights going on here, right? So if I fill that in like that, I lowered the opacity down kind of thing. And I sort of feel like erased the sides here. So I had like little like little lines going through here. I don't know if you guys like how this looks. I'm just going to keep it for this like tutorial purpose because I think it looks okay. But you know, there's like things that I want to do, but I just don't know how I would execute it properly. But if you want to do something like that, kind of have little, little lights, lights of shades everywhere else. Also, this is the part where you probably want to like start picking colors out if you want to use multiple color schemes. That way you can sort of obviously, once you kind of think about it, all I'm going to be doing is grouping everything that we just did right here, calling this left side, and then simply Alt, Shift, hold it over, Control T, bring the free transform, and then flip it horizontal, and then simply connect it in the middle here and make sure I have it in the middle actually. All right, so I messed up a little bit there, but it's okay. So there you guys go. Very, very simple. And I just did something like this, just like that. All right, so once you have this, we're gonna call this right really quickly. I'm gonna show you guys really quickly how I did the backing. And it's, if you can just guess it, all I actually did was combine these two things together, right? So you have like one entire thing. I moved one to the bottom. I moved one up. So I had two different copies, right? Of the same exact thing, which that also looks pretty cool as well. There's like a lot of things you can do with this. Honestly, pretty fun. All right, so what I ended up doing was merging them two together, 
going to filter going to where is it blur no not blur distort no it's definitely blur motion blur having at the angle of 150 uh 155 pixels 45 angle press ok and there you kind of go right now for me it might be more like right here ish so that looks pretty good so once you have this little backing here this entire thing starts really getting really cool very fast and then sort of the inside and everything else is all pretty like basically compared to like what you really want to do to it so i'm going to call this backing make sure i put this below everything because it is the backing i want above everything there we go looks pretty freaking badass now last but not least is this little circle thing in the middle like i said i'm not entirely sure how i wanted to put this circle thing but i'll show you guys how i ended up doing what i did at least right i ended up using the ellipse tool here i went ahead and just clicked in the middle hold alt shift or once i click hold alt and shift made a perfect circle right there just like so turn my fill off we'll put our stroke on i'll put on the color of let's just do it on the red make this point up a little bit Something like that, right? So what I ended up doing is make a very simple little circle, right? With this ellipse tool, turn off the fill, put the stroke on, put my points. Let's just put it to like 20 so it's even. Put it on this simple little line here. And then what I ended up doing, having to do was making a duplicate of the same exact ellipse tool, right? So you want to use the one on the bottom. You want to go here to this little thing again. And when I switch it from this line here to this little dotted line. So if I'm going to take it out really quick to show you guys what it looks like. When you have this little dotted line here and you move up, or move down i think it's down the points you'll get less no it's up okay so you get less of these and i want some like this so i can put this back in the middle really quickly right and i can just find myself like looking for let's see like a three like something like that right looks pretty good let's make sure this is in the middle there we go and then once you have something like this all you really have to do is then combine these two things together to make obviously one entire shape uh oh I don't know why I did that and then combine it there we go so group it then combined it I changed the color the color that I used for the inside was actually this color here this hex tone which is two two one seven one nine press ok press ok again and now I also did make this little outer line a little bit thicker but if you wanted to go ahead and change that in, uh, at the end of it whatever you can go ahead and do so otherwise I'm gonna put like a very nice simple another tone of color right in the inside here like right in the, in the middle of these two things turn the stroke off Let's make this red for the stroke and then put this up a little bit just like so. And then I just basically had my logo in the middle, which I don't have my logo copy. So I'm going to have to like steal one. Here it is. Okay. Let's just like duplicate that and then take it out. There we go. All right. So I got my little logo here. Put it right in dead smack in the middle. Shrink it down a little bit if you guys choose to. And I also had a very, very simple little... Let's also rasterize this image here, which has the little the, the circle thing here. I don't know why I'm like losing it right now, but let's go ahead into inner shadow. And we had a little a bit of a little bit of inner shadow, a little bit of stroke on this. You can put on overlay, maybe like one if you guys choose to. I think I'm just gonna keep with just inner shadow though. I think I had just inner shadow and maybe just a little bit of inner glow, right? Something like that, like like very very minuscule, but just such a little. I guess the main thing is the inner shadow, honestly. So right here, you're sort of basically finished. If you want to add like a very simple brightness and contrast, let's just say something like this, right? Some bright, a contrast up, brightness up if you choose to, and then last but not least, make a new layer. Take your brush, right? Change your brush settings from whatever the heck you had it to basically a nice big uh, zero hardness brush in here, and then we're gonna choose like a nice little reddish tone in here. And we're going to simply click around a couple times. Make sure you click in the middle for sure. And then maybe here. And then just throw it on linear dodge add. Lower the opacity down. And then you're pretty much done. So, very, very simple, honestly, right? The only thing I'm not entirely sure about is this little middle piece. Like I said, I wanted to show you guys different versions of it. How it kind of started off. And of course, I wanted to give you guys the same exact sort of ratio that I had before. That way you can see if you maybe saw something in between. Like wait, where it can even look better than what you think it looks like now. That's sort of the whole point of it, right? So hopefully you guys do enjoy today's video here today. 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below. And as always, guys, don't forget to leave a like on the video if you guys like do like it. If you just didn't want to even want the secret download. Also, follow my Twitter at SensoHQ. Also, freaking subscribe if you guys haven't already. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I will talk to you guys next week. Hopefully, I'll be um, probably like live streaming Monday through. I'll try to, I'm going to try to live stream as much as I can the Monday through Friday. And then just, we'll see what happens, honestly. You guys always come out, come through anyway. So I really, really do appreciate that very much. And I'll talk to you guys later. Sizzle HQ out. Peace.